Good morning and happy Tuesday. It is December 7th here and it is the seventh day of Vlogmas. If you're new around here, welcome. I am Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Those wool fibers and a fabric that I dyed in yesterday's video, they are all now finally dry. So today's plan, if it goes accordingly, is to put some wax down on them and perhaps make a kind of an experimental painting. Maybe not a completely finished painting, but just do some more experimenting with it. So I have the wax turned on. Like I said, the fabric is dry and let's get started. Okay, if you missed the video where I worked with some wool roving already, I will um, link it up here, <laughs> somewhere up here. But at any rate, um, these pieces were with the wool roving and these I put onto um, mat board, just plain old mat board. Today, because I want to keep experimenting and jot down a bunch of notes on this process, what I'm gonna do is put it on some paper, or that's the theory, on some mixed media paper. So first I'm gonna lay down some layers of the clear encaustic medium, and then this will hopefully allow me to tape this into the sketchbook afterwards and then make a bunch of notes. Um, again, I am trying to perhaps maybe come up with my next series of paintings for next year. And in order to do that, I really wanna do a bunch of experimenting. So. First things first, let's get some clear encaustic medium down on just some plain old mixed media paper. Thought I would do a quick clarification here. These papers are plain papers and then they're also the papers that were dyed when I dyed the wool roving, kind of the ink dripped off onto them. Okay, I moved the other papers off to the side. They all have encaustic medium on them now and I'm gonna concentrate on this one. I've got the gloves out, and this is the store-bought, inexpensive roving, and you can see in certain areas, here, let me see if I can, there we go. In certain areas, the ink um, applied to it stuck really well, and then in other areas, it's, it's kind of pretty, Bland. There's just, you know, a little bit of ink on there. So I think what I'm going to do and why I have the gloves out is I'm going to put some white encaustic paint on these. And then um, hopefully then embed them down to the front of this. So let's see how this goes. I don't know if you can see, but my white encaustic paint is pretty empty. So first I'm gonna make some more encaustic paint and I'll show you how I do that. It's pretty simple. Step one is to pour some clear encaustic medium into the white paint container. Step two is to add some of the titanium white dry pigment. I get mine from Earth Pigments and I just add a couple little scoops. I don't really measure, but I kind of have it down to where I know what how many scoops make the white i want to make now if you're doing this for a large painting i would suggest measuring it out or taking a note so that your white paint matches and step three through ten is stir 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 and more stirring <laughs> once that encaustic paint is thoroughly mixed up i can now start using it so i'm placing this wool roving down on the griddle and then i'm just dabbing this encaustic white paint over the top of it to coat it some in some areas and leave it open in others. Once I have that white paint applied to this roving, I'm gonna be sticking it down onto the background. And the encaustic medium on this background has cooled off a bit since it's been a little while. So I'm just going to heat it back up again with the heat gun, just real lightly in the top area where I wanna be putting this roving down and I simply t stick the roving down in where I want it, and then I smoosh it down with a piece of wax paper just to make sure most of the roving and the uh, background is adhered to each other so it's nice and secure. 
And then up next you'll see I do what I would call kind of a dry brushing technique where I let the paint cool off on the brush just a bit, just for a couple of seconds. And then I lightly, really gently go over the raised areas of the roving. And this just puts it in those highlighted raised areas and adds a little extra oomph to the texture, if you will, kind of brings that out nicely. So I'm going to let you sit back and watch the rest of this painting come together. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out and ask away in the comments. I'm happy to answer anything. So sit back and enjoy this painting. Okay, I'm going to push this one off to the side and I really don't like this background at all. So I'm going to mess around with it and then probably do the same thing, applying some of the wool roving to it, maybe in a different area, maybe a different technique, but uh, let's see. I like the dark blue areas and some of that roving that is really shining through from the India ink. So I'm applying some more India ink down and just to try to kind of pick up on that in certain areas. And you'll see I go back and forth between the India ink and wiping it off and some more encaustic paint and of course fusing between each layer. So again, sit back and enjoy the process. Coming back to that original painting, I decided it looked like a tree. So I'm just picking up on some of that uh, background color that was already there in the indie ink, the pink indie ink, and I'm painting in kind of a very loose trunk like shape. believe this is where I'm going to leave you today. I'm going to uh, get this video edited and up on YouTube. So um, you guys will have it later today, hopefully, fingers crossed. I'm going to flip the camera around and show you these two pieces, a couple close-ups, so um, you can kind of get more of a feel for them. Okay, here is the first piece. Little tree. And I like how that background still shows through and how the India ink layering it on top of this encaustic wax kind of um, has, still has the vein look. And then this is that wool roving up top here. And here is the other piece. Again, get to some close-ups of the texture here.
two completely different pieces. And this one, I can't decide whether I should do the heavy texture on the bottom or on the top. What do you guys think? Let me know below. Heavy texture top or heavy texture on the bottom. Leave me a comment and let me know. Again, thanks so very, very much for coming along on this little painting adventure. I really do hope you are enjoying these Vlogmas videos. If you are, you know what to do. Great big thumbs up. Anyways, we will see you tomorrow. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.